Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 475, recording live on Thursday, September 29th. I'm one of your hosts, Mo. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly. I'm ADL. I'm ADL. (laughs) And I'm Kyle. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Kelly. Well, thank you. Listen to last week as well. It was well done, guys. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly sorry <laughs> it was fine it wasn't fine it was it was good actually. another it was a, another emmy nomination another is coming bang our up. way for sure <laughs> yeah another bang up podcast mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, short and sweet and to the point yeah. and i wasn't on so that maybe, one was short. Yep. maybe that was the point hmm. i wasn't on so we can uh, we can get into what we did with guns this week. And Kelly, do you want to start us off? I'm sure you have tons to talk about. Well, maybe. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the last couple of weeks have been busy. I went to I had a maple seed uh, in near Toronto in Cookstown. So at the Toronto International uh, Rifle and Pistol Club, it's beautiful. I posted pictures on my Facebook page and shared them with you guys as well. That's one awesome range. We're gonna go back there again. So it was very very nice. One of the reasons it was so nice is because they have a covered firing line and. Yeah, we didn't have to bring. I brought the maple seed trailer up, but I didn't have to unpack it at all. So it was nice. Uh, we had some new instructors join us as well. So we had three brand new ins- uh, new instructors that did have never, who've never um, done any instruction. It was their first event, so it was really awesome to see. They did such a good job too. They came really well prepared with their points of instruction, and then also uh, Patrick, who's a regular listener as well, he was there and he was my 2IC and he did a fantastic job too. So it was a really, really good shoot. And I I left really early in the morning because I didn't want to deal with the 400 again. So I left at 3 a.m., got there at, um, no, no, no. Yeah, it was pretty close to almost uh, seven o'clock. And then Got home that night at around midnight and got up early in the morning again because we had an orientation for uh, FRPC, which is my local club. We had new shooters come in and new members join us, so we did an orientation. So I I was put on the firing the rifle firing line, so I was able to put through. I think it was twelve or thirteen, no, it was thirteen new shooters that joined our club, and then last weekend, the one that just happened, a bunch of those shooters that joined the club they had to actually do uh, probation shoots so they've already done one with me on the rifle line so a lot of them booked with me again so I spent most of last weekend at the range doing probation shoots and signed off a whole bunch of them so they didn't have to do their third shoot and then we also had our AGM as well and no I did not volunteer to become part of the board at at our local club I couldn't do that just uh, but I was there to support the club and also the new and the old um, director. So it was nice. And then I put forth a couple of things. I actually wanted to thank the club because they always support Project Maple Seed and also the CCFR. Uh, they've donated uh, $20,000 in the last year to the CCFR as well as CSSA. So it was awesome and to see and I wanted to thank them. And yeah, made proposals for so June 3rd next year for National Range Day, putting out an event and also Ladies Day. So they were very receptive to it. And then also we talked about things that are going on in politics and what we can do about it at a municipal level, like get involved, write your our counselors. Um, what else? Oh, planning the next few shoots podcast. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to be talking about clays. So I do know, Kyle, you're going to be all over that, right? If I remember to catch it, I'll grab it afterwards anyways, for sure. Okay. My Tuesday nights end up being crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> so Terry Houston's going to be on. She's going to be talking about uh, the club that she has or the ladies group that she's organized. She's out of Vancouver. So it's going to be in two weeks time. So on Tuesday night. So make sure that 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Uh, out on the Pacific. Okay. Um, yeah, the other thing that I've been doing is getting the calendar. So we've been working harder on the calendar, the CCFR Gunny Girl calendar. So guess what? We're done what? on our end. We're done on our end. So kind of. Uh, so it's going to be going to print very, very soon. We're just making sure that all the proofing is done and catching any mistakes. But I will be posting a link for it soon. So you, everybody who's listening is going to have to buy one, if not two or 10 uh, for Christmas this year. So be a, they will be out well in time for Christmas this year. So I wanted to say thank you to everybody who has helped out in any way. Our fantastic women's group, the models, the photographers and all the sponsors and everybody else who is just buying it because without that, we wouldn't be able to fund all the ladies days that we're having so yeah um yeah that's about it busy every night with uh things so that's me what about you adriel oh i got into a couple of things uh let's see i did that maple seed yeah maple seed double header uh first it was at Chaz, um which was really great uh steve from Chaz, who's a listener uh told me about the space wrangler i don't know if you guys have heard about this uh, but it's a 3d printed no thing you put on the front of your Ruger Wrangler to make it look like a space gun and uh, kind of neat. So if you Google space Wrangler, you'll see some, uh, some options out there on what they do with those. <laughs> and it's a uh, very neat, very neat. Okay. We're going to have to Google this while you're, you're talking. Okay. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. Take a look I'll at Google. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, there was some other Sunfire radio listeners there. In fact, one of them uh, qualified rifleman. So congrats. You know who you are. I don't know if you want me to say your name on the air, so I won't. Uh, one of the attendees uh, had a cool little shorty GSG 16, the six inch barrel version. Mm, 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 looked tight. Not great. Not a great <laughs> tool for maple seed, no. but it looked really cool. And uh, We're fun to ran. shoot. Yeah, it ran yeah. too. So it was, that was neat. And the other thing that I saw that was running that was kind of weird was uh, another listener was running an ISSC SPA, which is that straight pull, that expensive straight pull that Cabell's has on sale once in a while for 250 yeah. bucks. Mm-hmm. And it ran fine for him. This, the mags are very sticky. So like his, whenever he had to change his mags, it was, uh, it was a bit of a chore, but uh, it ran for him. Didn't seem to have any jams. Mine has all sorts of like uh, extraction ejection issues. Um, yeah. His ran fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next day I was over at Sherwood Park and uh, I think one of the interesting things there, an old guy there, uh, Abe, had a rifle, a Weatherby Mark 12 that he bought in like 1962. Really? It, mm-hmm. nice. yeah, sorry, not a Mark 12, a Mark 22. Okay. Um, made in Italy by Beretta. Uh, really high end. Like it had a selectable semi or single shot uh, selector on the side, a bolt hold open. The mag release was like a little button in front of the magazine. Like really, I don't know if you guys have, I've never seen one of these before. Um, I can't say really, I have, no. <laughs> really nice. No. Uh, they didn't They didn't make many, very many of them. So when I, I was like, what even is that? He's like, that's a Weatherby made in Italy. Mm, okay, Beretta. Beretta made that, but uh, uh, very high end 22. Uh, that was the Maple Seeds. In uh, that, that, uh, and those are the last of the year for me. We still have one more in Alberta uh, this weekend coming up, but I won't be there. Uh, I put a heater in my workshop so I can make ammo over the winter. So anytime I want to, I got a remote control for it, kick the heat on and uh, nice. get that rolling on in there. Put on a video on uh, some gun lights, some shotguns, put that video out. Um, I'm glad it was so like. Uh, the, on those thing, those single shot shotguns, like the recoil on them is like really bad, and they feel like terrible. They they feel awful, and I was I was I was worried like, am I the only one that's gonna feel this way? No, nope. everyone else is like, no, they're terrible to shoot. <laughs> but, like you need us, <laughs> you need a slip on recoil pad on there. They're five pounds flat, so it's it's a very light shotgun to be shooting anything out of. So yeah, uh, slip on butt pad for those for the win. Uh, and then this weekend, oh, uh, the other thing I did, I forgot to write it down here when I was out at Chaz, I brought all my new to me handguns, uh, uh-huh. the, um, 
the Jericho, the Norinko Olympia, and the two Nork handguns. And uh, the uh, Tokarevs ran just fine. The Olympia ran just fine. It hits a little bit high at 10 yards. I wouldn't mind trying it at like 20 and that kind of thing. Uh, the, the mags are still a pain in the ass to load. So I'm going to have to like work those over. The Jericho gave me a couple of stove pipes. I don't, like it's fairly new though. It hasn't been like, it doesn't have a ton of usage through it. So it might just need uh, some usage and some oil, maybe potentially before it, uh, before it runs well. Um, yeah. So those are all good. This weekend I'm going hunting uh, with a buddy of mine and a listener and buddy, other buddy of mine, uh, Thomas. And we're going to go, uh, Look for some deer and grouse and that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Get the tent trailer out there. It's going to be a gorgeous weekend, though. Like, set, like, overnight lows of seven and highs of like 23, 24, that kind of thing. So, yeah. It's going to be so warm. Way too nice for hunting. Way too <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, what do I wear? A t shirt? How, are, how like, are you going to be miserable in that? <laughs> I typically, if I go hunting, it's minus 20. Minus 20 is where is where my comfort zone for hunting. So, like all my gear is is way too warm for twenty. Do you even yeah. have ammo to use for twenty degrees? I've got like a three gun shirt. Like, <laughs> that's got some ammo. On it. I have some stuff, but even at, even then, if you're doing any kind of walking around, it's easy to to oh, get overheated. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna cook. So like my like my orange for my head is a toque. I don't have a, an orange hat. I've I've never needed one, but uh, it's just too nice this weekend. So. so down in your area, do you have to wear orange? No, but this area oh, I'm going okay. like I typically hunt private land, and so yeah. but I don't care about wearing orange. I'd like my friends aren't going to shoot me, but if I'm hunting anywhere where public people <laughs> can go, I'm going to wear orange because I don't want to get shot. Well, it's just <laughs> curious. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a I don't want to die thing. Um, <laughs> but because uh, like yeah, you can go out without wearing orange. It's not required uh, in the area that uh, that I hunt, but. Uh, you might catch a bullet, so you know. Yeah, yeah fair uh, enough. Love you too, Tim. Yeah, there's our friend Tim Crosno for down in uh, down in Texas. Texas. I'm sure he doesn't mean it, Adro. He does actually. Ah, uh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tim's does. comment for the audio listeners is, "Hey guys and girl, tuning in for once my once and a quarter QA check. Adriel's still ugly. I'll put that in my report." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's about it for me. Uh, what about you, Kyle? Well, I did go hunting this weekend. I left Friday morning, headed out, set up my camp and everything, and made it out for the evening. And, uh, well, weekend was basically another stories with half. I didn't shoot anything, but it was it was close, and it was really exciting. But, uh, yeah, Friday night. Saw three does, but it was Friday night, so I was like, no, I'm not going to shoot a doe yet. It's a little early, and I I really wanted an elk, and actually Friday night was my last night for moose, so I was really trying to find a moose, but that didn't happen. Mm. Uh, Saturday morning, woke up, took a hike down to the river. I I wanted to be down there, and so it ended up being uh, a 6K hike, so not bad, but, uh, I mean, the, the area, is, it's incredible. So I camp up on a shelf, and then the river horizontally is like 700 yards away, but there is about 800 meters of elevation change to get down there. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. it's it's a going down is not so bad. It's getting back up. <laughs> but so, yeah, I went down to the riverbed. River is really low right now. I mean, it's late in the year, but uh, walked up basically as far as practical and then turned around and made my way back up for camp for noon then uh took the side by side driving around just checking out some new areas and ended up sitting in a little cut line in between two cut blocks for the evening didn't see anything but uh yeah this is where things get interesting because i went to bed saturday night and got woke up at 3 30 in the morning by uh an elk bugling so Oh, that guy you had yeah. to bed. <laughs> oh, it, it woke me up. Yeah, it was actually a really weird dream. A dream someone screamed, and then I kind of snapped too, and there was an elk bugling. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Frightening. <laughs> and so he, he bugled like three, four times in about like 15, 20 second intervals. And I'm laying in bed thinking, oh, great. 
he's here now so that means in about four hours time when it's hunting light he's gonna be gone oh so i was a, a little lazy sunday morning we'll say and i was still in bed when uh half awake eyes eyes closed but you're still kind of awake and then i hear the bugle again i look at my phone and oh great three minutes to shoot in light so i i can say that i've never been up out of bed and dressed for hunting and out the door faster in my life <laughs> oh that yeah how'd it go uh so he was I estimate because he was down below me off the shelf. Okay. And I, I want to say maybe uh, 120 yards away at this point. I uh, So I got out, let out a bugle, and uh, a few minutes later, he answered. Okay, cool. So I, I gave it another couple minutes, answered him back. And this went on for maybe, like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then I started hearing the bush, you know, him start crashing through the bush. And it sounded at first like, he, okay, he's coming right in, just perfect, except for it was 80 yards straight down a 60-degree incline before the next shelf. Oh, dear. And, like, okay, if he comes to the base of this, I could shoot him, but I'm not cherishing the, the pack out from that. And it's very narrow windows, but... The uh, the brush crashing didn't it after a while it just didn't sound like he was coming, it just okay. and finally I I saw a tree move, yeah, okay well there there he is he's right there but still never got sight of him but okay well we had an east to west or west to east wind, which is great because at that time in the morning my thermals would have busted him but with the wind that we had wasn't an issue and figure okay well he's going to circle around to the quad trail and try and win me coming up mm -hmm. so i follow i walked back and forth it was like only 50 yards to where the quad trail came up from from where my camp was and still bugled back and forth and this one time he he didn't bugle he just chuckled <laughs> and i he, i just followed it immediately with a bugle uh -huh. and then everything went silent yeah. The bush, he knew who, him, yeah. everything just went silent. So I was sitting there thinking, okay, well, did did I get too aggressive with that? Like, Because I when after he chuckled, I was I almost cut him off and uh -oh. bugled back at him because I figured, okay, he's getting aggressive. And later on, watching some videos and that, turns out that I actually did what I was supposed to do in that situation. But uh, it was like, figure okay he's gonna try and win me and i figure okay he's gone but i'm gonna hang around and and wait a little bit and after about 10 15 minutes it felt like half an hour but i figure it's probably about 15 minutes i decided well no i would have heard bush if he blew out if i was too aggressive and he decided to leave i would have heard something. yeah you he would have yeah you would have heard him take off and so i was sitting north no yeah, north of the uh, quad trail, because you're okay. He's gonna come up that if he's coming up that, that's a perfect spot because he's not gonna win me. And I decided to move forward and figure, okay, well he's got to be still standing there, but I gotta entice him to come up because I, I want him on top of this shelf because I didn't want to pack him out. So I go to the edge of the shelf and let out a cow call. Well, off to my left, immediately. I heard shit go wild and then bush sounding going away. Yeah. Hmm. So, so I figured, okay, well now, now he's gone. <laughs> hmm. And I, I, after I went back to camp, kind of licked my wounds, kicking myself a little bit, but then I, I was like, I have to know, cause it sounded like he was right on that quad trail. And if so, he was, he was really close. And so I, I grabbed my rifle and I walked down. And I could see exactly where he was at. And walking, he was about 40, 40 yards from cresting the hill. Okay. so he's Horizontally really about 10, 15 yards from where I called from. Yeah. So close. Oh, so close. And I, it, he was coming. He was doing exactly what I wanted him to do. And he was, the start of this hill was big boulders, kind of like a boulder scree field. And he was two steps from hitting the boulder where I'd actually start hearing him come again. <laughs> 
Mm. Well, something yeah. happened. He got so, wind of you. It, well, I, yeah, I just, I scared him. And it, where I was standing, he could have easily gotten wind because I did move forward to make that call. Yeah. So, but I, in the end, I'm still happy because I was able to actually call him in and yeah. call the play and actually get him to do what I wanted him to do. In hindsight, I probably should have gone down the hill and gotten on the same level of him and gotten him to come. But, you know, either way. Well, now was... you have a really cool story. Yeah, then that was basically the end of my high hunting on the weekend. I stayed out Sunday and still tried, but uh, to no avail and okay. packed up Monday morning and, and came back to town. You know, a, a lot of guys out there um, call and just never have it work or or just shoot their elk with uh, with a rifle or something like that and, and, and don't really do a lot of calling. So getting some time getting your calls perfected and getting some like hard learned experience uh, with <laughs> calling. I think it's good. I think it just makes you more dangerous the next time you're out. Right. You know more about what works. You've seen stuff firsthand about what works and what doesn't. A lot of guys don't get that calling experience. I've got no. almost no calling experience with deer yeah. because I just sit there and wait for them to come by and yeah. uh, I'll <laughs> rattle every once in a while. And that's it. Yeah. So I'm uh, actually crap at calling them in. Yeah. And I've, just recently started using the mouth calls and actually taking elk hunting seriously instead of just, oh, I buy a tag and hopefully I, I come across them kind of thing. And it, it, it's tough. And like my bugles are crap. They are absolute crap. So I was really blown away that, hey, they actually worked and got him to come in because I was kind of laughing to myself the whole time while I was trying to bugle. And like, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. <laughs> I wonder if there's like regional dialects for elk bugling maybe you had a different <laughs> yeah. well it's funny because i was telling my dad and mentioning my crappy call and he's like you know what some of the worst calls i've ever heard from an elk have been come from an actual elk yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah so um but yeah hopefully next week i can get out uh it's getting closing into the end of the rut and that so We'll see. Hopefully I can get something. But uh, that was, yeah, that was the hunting. The rest of the time I, uh, well, I actually got around to making Crystal's holster and I'm almost done the mag pouches for the weekend. Cool. Let's have a look. So nice. there's the holster I made for, I figured she's going to use the Zev. So. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so cool. very nice. Yeah. Nice little Kydex. So first foray into Kydex making and it, it snaps in there nice and solid. Okay. Is that Beautiful. like a hydro dip or is that a pattern that came on the Kydex already? It's a pattern that come on the Kydex. That's oh, cool. that's neat. They don't yeah. have that as a tandy leather near near my place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a black. Any color if you want, except for it's black. <laughs> yeah, I ordered it on online and then uh, I Where'd you took order? apart. Hmm? Where did you order it from? Uh, Holstersmith.com. Okay. Ah. Yeah. And I actually, it's funny, I took apart a couple Weber Tactical holsters to get these nice adjustment blocks for the pistol mags and for mm -hmm. making, making her pistol pouches. So I still got to do that, put drill and put the attachment on it. But yeah, so. That's so cool. Coming out not too bad. Very, Very nice. Very good. Yeah. Pulls that uh, up. Yep. Yeah. Got to the range, sighted in her rifle because we got her a new optic. Because the optic we did have on it for when she did the maple seed is my uh, VX6 multi gun, and I wanted that back to put back. on my yeah. uh, three gun oh, rifle. <laughs> whatever. So we ended up picking her up a loophole VX Freedom RDS. Oh, cool. It's a uh, site I've been wanting to check out since it came out. Uh, 34 mil tube and yeah, red dot sight. And, With turrets yeah. on it. Interesting. Yeah, you can you can get the BDC turrets. Uh, this one's just your standard your standard cap, but you can get them with the BDC turret. Oh, uh, that's interesting. You know, yeah. uh, uh, back in the day, a lot of people went for the Spitfire because it had the adjustable um, for three gun. Because yeah. you need for those long range shots, you need that yeah. turret on there. I guess that the yeah. loophole's got that now on there. Well, they up, came out with this uh, a couple years ago, I think. They came out yeah. with this, and right, and they were originally advertising it with the turret, and that's exactly what I thought. Is like, hey, that just changes your limited game mm -hmm. for three gun. 
being mm-hmm. able to dial mm-hmm. in. Um, unfortunately, this isn't the BDC, but that's fine. It still worked out good and came with the mount. So, yeah, really nice, easy to see through and should do her good. Awesome. Hey, excellent. She's all, yeah, this is, she's all kitted out now. Yeah, getting there. Uh, I didn't get a shotgun built for her, so she's going to be using my Benelli, but uh, she she does kind of get spoiled because <laughs> hey. I have another Benelli here I was going to build up for her, but I didn't get a, get a chance to, to do it. Mm. Not, but... Uh, Okay. My boys well, have to deal with a Gersan. I'm not, there's no way in hell I'm making anything that expensive. For uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what else? Oh, there was uh, interesting when we were sighting in, and it's just over time, spending time at the range, hearing the stories, and that one kind of came to a realization uh, how many people don't know how to foresight slash sight in a rifle. Yeah. We were there, and one guy, he had a 300 win mag. Nice looking rifle and everything. And the RO is trying to help him, and they're looking, and we're on the 50 meter range. And you're not on paper. Like, I don't know where you're at and everything. And even the RO started going through, and I don't know if he just had his head, but he started to well, line, up your, line up your crosshair on the target and then see where your barrel is. And hey, well, do you guys mind if I? step in and give you a hand so got him bore sighted quickly and and told showed him every step like okay well this is what i'm doing okay now that i've got your barrels your, your barrel set up look through and you can see what i'm looking at and mm-hmm. whatnot adjusted his scope okay now compare the two so you can see what i'm doing now take a shot and he, he got on paper and then dialed and then i was able it, to dial in after that yeah yeah, well, yeah. I helped them with the MOA adjustments and that because they were talking about bringing out a pen and paper and doing math. And like, okay, no, it's oh, you're, math, you're eh? 50, half inch. <laughs> I am like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so, did you give, but did you give him a card and say, hey, come and, I, come and do a clinic with us? I don't have a card. Well, we should get cards for you guys. You <laughs> 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 should get blank ones and then put your name on it. I don't even have a range card anymore right now. Not really? No, because I my official position is past VP. Well, that's still a, an official position. Yeah. Uses business cards yeah. these days. I, right. I still right have a, a bunch of my VP <laughs> business cards. So, <laughs> but uh, no, he he got on there and I like I said I showed him every step and explained the MOA and said once you go to a hundred, it's not going to be half inch; it's one inch. So one of these squares is four clicks of your scope. Yeah. And I broke it down that way for him. But it's just a continual kind of thing that I, I find funny, like a simple foresight. Well, but you have to recognize that people aren't you and they start out. You started out someplace too. Oh, no. for Yes, for sure. Like this guy's comment was, oh, I always have my brother or a friend here and they sighted my rifle for me. Right. Well, here, we, you're going <laughs> to do it yourself. I, I'll be honest. I would. Yeah. Last weekend and the weekend before, when I was uh, on the rifle range with everybody, uh, I gave everybody my card, but I specifically gave a couple of people my card and said, call me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, call me if you want to go over to the other range where you have to be, you know, 4 MOA at 100, which you should be able to do. Should be able to, yeah. Right, but they weren't. So I said, I'll yeah. get you there. Come and see me. Well, yeah, and I'm not trying to knock this guy. It's just, it's it's funny on something that all of us take as something so basic and simple, how how many people actually don't know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, Kelly and I see it a lot, though. Like, there's tons of people who don't know how to adjust their scope or don't know how to get their their rifle set in. I'll try to get them to do it, but sometimes if I'm, like, trying to push for a schedule... Yeah, I will just get out of myself and start on the rifle, and I'll just do it. Because if they're off paper... It's easy to get them on paper. You sight through it. You shoot something on the berm. You make big, and bad it, adjustments to yeah. get them on paper. And then and then let them be on paper yeah. and then make that funnel adjustment when we get to it. But yes, yeah. this is exactly what we do. But we see it We see it quite consistently. And some people yeah. can't uh, can't shoot a good enough group to know uh, what to do for, for zero either. So, yep. Yeah. 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 
And then there's other people who come prepared. Ooh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's very but, uh, interesting yeah. stuff, though. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I got the team matchup in Peace River this weekend. So we're Ooh. going mad through the house trying to get prepped for that and head yeah. out tomorrow. So yeah. Cool. Excellent. Good luck with that. Well, thank That's you. That's the team three gun match, right? Yeah, every year, and it's just it's it's a great time. You get to see people that you don't see all year. So there's a we like to say it's a party and a three gun match breaks out. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sounds that way. Sounds that way. Well, I'm yeah. I'm busy hunting. Otherwise, I'd be there. It sounds like a great time. Yeah, there's a but there is a bunch of people from Chaz coming up and mm-hmm. not. To, yeah, me and my old partner from when I first started shooting it are back together. So team mock chicken flies again. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good time. But uh, enough of me. How about you, Mo? What did you get up to? Oh, that's a hard act to follow. Um, I went to a Nipsic match in Quebec uh, this past weekend. It was at the Masca match in uh, St. Dominic. Uh, it was five stages, a nice day. Uh, my favorite stage was it was a 32 rounder with only two paper targets. So the rest was steel poppers and plates. So it's always fun. It's like, it's like a steel challenge with lots of move with extra movement. Right. So it was a lot of fun. Nice. Just, just hearing the plinking. Um, and then only we side did, side uh, movement? Yes, it's one of the it's yeah. one of the ranges where it's only there's there are other ranges where there's forward movement, but that one is just side to side. So um they, they make it challenging in other ways, right? To to, to still make it fun, but um then we Summer did salt, the, cartwheel. Yes, yes. Yes. Caring <laughs> caring newborns, uh you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> seeing eye dogs all, all all that stuff puppies um yeah <laughs> puppies yes and puppies too <laughs> uh after that we did the the did the tear down and then since it was their last match of the season they had a they had a barbecue with drinks and snacks oh, nice. and it was a good gathering of people that's a very much a quebec uh ipsa quebec thing there's always like a gathering and it's a lot it's a lot of fun um so i stuck around quite a bit my friends louie and lisa were there too and uh yeah that was that so i think that's pretty much it for the 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 outdoor season um well there's for quebec i think and then for ontario there might be grenville and maybe one more and then it's all going to be the indoor stuff and now the indoor schedules are coming out yeah um so that's good it's going to be good to i'm not sure if we're going to do indoor i haven't seen any plans for i know that we have a batch this weekend are you signed up for that no, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm traveling back home, and I won't be able. To, I won't have time to to do any matches, which is rare because I usually squeeze one in. Um, did you guys? You guys didn't do one. In, you didn't do indoor season last year, correct? No, we did not. Okay, so it's been like during the COVID COVID years. COVID years, we have not done indoor. Although we practice indoor, we're just not opening it up to other people. Hoping this you guys have a pra- you have a practice night, but not actual official matches. Correct. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, Quebec's going to be good because uh, there's three or four ranges I usually go to, and they're they they almost have a, a, a match a month, so it works out. Though. You can almost shoot every weekend if you want to. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's good, and then everything's within half an hour to an hour and a half. So it's definitely not Alberta, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, did Louis tell you that he met me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Him and his wife. And he they said that awesome. and uh, that I don't give you uh, that I don't give them anything. <laughs> <laughs> that you what? That I don't give them anything from the show. So. Oh, I gave them that oh. patches. But you gave them patches. Yeah, I know. They <laughs> said swag. And I said, "Hey, did Mo give you swag?" And they're going, "No." And I'm oh, going, just, "Really?" Well, they sent me okay. pictures. Uh, they sent me pictures after oh. they met you, and I was like, "Hey, where'd you get that?" <laughs> I figured it LA. was you. Um, <laughs> How's that bus feel, Mo? <laughs> bus? Yeah, yeah, I know. The one that yeah, just that. drove over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just a second. Uh, uh, what else for me? Um, I got my license, my our, our pal renewal in the mail, so that's all done. Sweet. Very happy to have that. Um, I was doing some um, uh, nine mil factory ammo shopping, browsing because 
I don't know if you guys saw it. It seemed like the prices were going down for bulk for 1,000, like 1,000 rounds. It looked like the prices were going down, starting to come under 400, like a case. And now it's back to 450. Like if we're talking like name brand 124 grain and better, yeah. right? You can you um, can find better deal, like a better deal for 115 grain, but you don't yeah. Know so. Yeah, so I think uh, even Adriel's mentioning Tenda has like you can get two thousand rounds. I think it works out to three eighty, you know, good. per per that's case. But that's no. for the one fifteen aluminum. But I think one twenty four oh. uh, solely outdoors had again a two thousand rounds, and it works out to three ninety five a case plus tax. But that was a pickup only, so you have to be lo- obviously anywhere near there. Yeah, to, that's a good to, deal to get. Yeah. But everything else is it's like it's like four fifty and up. So it's uh so much for the ammo going down in price. Um so what are you gonna sell or what are you gonna do to afford ammo now? Reload. Uh, an, you gotta reload. An you gotta... organ, probably. I have my <laughs> kidneys are pretty good, so okay. <laughs> I'm not a... <laughs> there you go. You can sell a kidney. You only need one. Hello. Yeah, like how many you kidneys a, you do press, you need for don't don't you have I have a pre- yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm I'm I haven't I haven't moved I haven't moved yet, so it's not reset up. Oh. My friend Louis did my friend Louis did offer to use to go to his place to um to reload, right? So I might I might take him up on that. I you should, really um, should go to Louis's house. You guys should reload like two thousand rounds and none of this bespoke yeah. stuff. But You'll have all the ammo you need. Yep, but that's not in Mo's vocabulary. Two thousand. Yeah, it, it doesn't fit into my my small batches. Uh, um, schedule, my, but to some to people, that Kirkland is a small bucket. batch. Yeah, yeah. two thousand. <laughs> it needs to go into a Kirkland bucket with a scoop in it. Yeah, <laughs> is this with a one a scoop, scoop match or a two scoop, scoop match? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna take a couple of handfuls and fill my pockets and go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, away, and away you go. And away you go. Um, As you approach the line. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I got a load of my mags. <laughs> uh, like ready, right? Yeah, that was really it for me. Um, we can get into the events. Doesn't look like doesn't look like much. Maple seed. What do we have? Drumheller on October first. Yep. And is, yeah, like, is still spots the, available. Mm-hmm. Still spots available for Drumheller. Yeah. Uh, there's a Ladies' Day event at Chaz on October 1st. There's spots available for that. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, good luck, by the way, with that. Kira Munster has been doing a lot of work, and I know that the club itself has been doing a lot of work for that, too. So I okay. met her recently. Good. She may or may not be in the calendar, I'm not giving any hands, but she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And this year, I'm going to pick up the calendar from you, or we're going to meet somewhere because I can't trust that it's going to get to me. So Excuse I'll me. buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can meet. We can meet at uh, Pete's. Pete's uh, Pete. smoke meat Pete's. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll meet there, and we'll have smoke meat. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, Ladies' Days Kelly, also known as the CCFR's Women's Division, is looking to support, sponsor Ladies' Days events at your range. This is a range-driven initiative, but if you'd like sponsorship and support, contact Kelly at slamfireradio at gmail.com or yep. info at firemsrights.ca. Correct. And people are already asking about next year as well, so get the information in. We just had recently had a little club in BC uh, put on an event, and it was so fantastic. There was... Good. You know, 20 women at the range and they were all smiles and it was awesome. Even a small little club was able to put it on. So yeah. And buy your calendars because that's what's funding that. How could they not have fun? Right. Right. (laughs) Right. Yes. What else would they rather be doing? Uh, Nothing. Uh, I'd rather be at the range. Yeah. See, there you go. Uh, we'll get into the news. Uh, the first story, Arkansas sco- scopes and accessories have arrived at Range View Sports. I probably should have put that under new gun stuff. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> There's other things. Yeah, that sounds nice about right the there. <laughs> yes. I had we... stuff like midweek as I find it. I'm like, oh, okay. That was finally There's no real, nothing really new in news this week. Why? Well, we're going to have to fill it with Range View. Guess what? There's other things that are no. happening in the news right now. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. We had a bit, we had a big story out of Alberta. Mm-hmm. Who wants to speak to that? Well, the uh, Marco asked the um, provinces, all the provinces for help with the uh, confiscation of our guns. Confiscation <laughs> of our guns. <laughs> yeah. They prefer to call it a buyback program, but I don't remember buying it from them. Yeah. No. Um, no. Yeah, so they, he asked for help on it. He said, hey, provinces, I need your help. And Alberto's like, no, in fact, we're going to tell our cops not to do anything to help any of this stuff. <laughs> I was wondering good, about that good. from the perspective, they said, including any provincially funded, so RCMP as well as incorporated into that uh, statement. However, the RCMP is funded by uh, the feds and the province. feds and the province. So the RCMP mm-hmm. are going to be going, hmm. Yeah, well, going to be in a tough spot, a... I think. There is uh, some section in there where the province gets to tell the RCMP the some stuff. stuff. Yeah. What to do? Now, whether the RCMP listens or not, don't know. Was this just a giant ploy to get the Alberta police force? Maybe. Yep. But uh, hey, that might, uh, Jason Kenny's he's on the way out. Go mm-hmm. open bang. He was, pushing, he, he was pushing for this stuff anyways, though. Yeah, and, I know. And yeah. Daniel Smith, who's one of the front runners for uh alberta right now is pushing for that kind of stuff pretty Mm -hmm. pretty hard yeah terry bryant by the way amazing lady if Mm -hmm. you haven't looked at if you haven't seen the video that we did recently okay it wasn't recent it was a few months ago but everybody should go and and, uh, check that out but terry was behind this as well she's such an articulate person as well she can Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so so the cfo in alberta and alberta provincial government are saying screw you and then so what happens next so what happened next guys what's the next piece of news they uh announced that they were applying for intervener status on all six of the court cases correct so they are going to try and particularly ccfr as well as everybody's uh, court cases which is interesting i think that they Mm -hmm. will actually get in so that's fantastic Mm -hmm. and then what happened well, because like the the interesting part about the, they deserve to get in because property rights are provincial, not federal. Firearms law is federal, mm-hmm. but and property that- rights is provincial. Do the do the feds really have the justification to enact this property seizure? Eh, no, they they enacted secrecy because they don't even want to talk about why they chose the ones why they did. Yep. So they do have some sort of um, they have a unique right perspective to, to, to yeah. bring to the argument. Correct. Yeah. 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 And that's one of the arguments they used yeah, specifically why they were going to choose not to support that is because mm-hmm. they feel that the federal government is encroaching on property rights and that's their area. But that's where they do. So. Should be. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So what happened next? And then. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like this. I like this. Keep going, Kelly. <laughs> well, Saskatchewan joined. Correct. So yes. the CFO from Saskatchewan said the exact same thing. We feel like it's an infringement upon property rights, and we will look at alternative measures. We are not going to support that, and we will also uh, direct the RCMP not to actually take any action. So that was Saskatchewan. That was a couple of days ago. And then? And, and then? <laughs> <laughs> what else Bef- happened? Before I came on, I thought I read something from Manitoba, but I didn't get to really dive into it. So I don't know I if it was oh, official. I hadn't so heard the Manitoba. That was today. So Manitoba is uh, also supporting the actions of their other provinces Excellent. in the West. Nice. Mm-hmm. They also mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. not going to be supporting and they're going to say, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, so the okay. only Western province that has not jumped on board is BC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I know. NDP, yeah. Well, and I mean, like, yeah, no, B- BC is two provinces. It's uh, it's yeah. the lower mainland and it's the northern part. And the yeah. northern part is might as well be Alberta for how they vote and, and yep. choose to do things. And that's pretty the much lower mainland is very metropolitan. And they the urbanites. Have, yeah, they have very different views on this kind of stuff. You'll see that as well in other provinces. Like, for example, in Ontario, it's the exact same thing. Anything that happens yeah. in Toronto or along the 401 corridor, as well as down into the um, the green belt. That's who decides what happens in Ontario. Yeah. Redmonton is very different as well from the rest of Alberta. Yeah. Okay. So three provinces all saying screw you. Yay. Maybe Ontario. Nothing nothing may happen. Yeah, we need like the 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 feds might just like say, okay, well, we'll just uh, uh, mail your guns in. 
Hey, Kelly, we know you have a, one of these. Uh, we know you have one of those. Pack it in a box and send it to us. I'm in Ontario. Gonna They're going to be showing up at my door. Oh, yeah. They're not going to show up at <laughs> my door. I might have to mail them in if they want them. But the other side of that is the Alberta government is saying, like, yeah, we're also not going to confiscate them. So it's now what? Yeah, good. And I mean, good like, them. well, other provinces have done this before. Like for BC, for the longest time, Vancouver would refuse to uh, prosecute anyone who is running a weed dispensary, which, like, who cares? Weeds, weed isn't guns. But same thing. It's federal law. They chose to ignore it. Uh, cops don't really arrest people for simple possession right now in most of the provinces of like hard drugs or light mm-hmm. drugs. So like, th- like there is some precedence for the provinces just saying like, yeah, it's federal law, but it's a dumb law. So we're just not going to obey it or do anything about it. You'll never see one of those charges on its own. Maybe if someone does something else illegal and they want to throw that on, that'll happen. But on its own, I could, yeah. I could very easily see Alberta just saying, you know what? No, we're never, we're, just going to drop those cases and we're not going to even see them. So don't even bother charging people with yep. them. They could, they could totally do that. I think yeah. also it's the municipal police forces as well. They're going to make those decisions too. If it goes out to the provinces. So it, that's why I said at the AGM contact your, your local um, municipality counselor. Yeah. Uh, also your, your mayor as well. I said, well, because go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I, you mentioned municipal police forces, and that was one thing I saw interesting, I think, today on uh, Facebook, is apparently Grand Prairie is looking at the possibility of getting its own municipal police force instead of using the RCMP. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, the RCMP has its own. And, yeah. 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 The RCMP right now is struggling, obviously, with some of the things that have happened recently, but they're also struggling because of a lot of the stuff that they're, you know, the program is the National Police Force, and People are no longer happy and they're starting to adopt their own municipal police forces. So, yeah. Oh, this is interesting. So, Mm -hmm. Calgary police has declared they will support the federal confiscation. Well, Hmm. Calgary has gotten pretty liberal over the years. Or the city councilor or who? Because who's, who's making that order? That's interesting. Yeah, let's yeah. research that a little bit. Ding. Damn. I um, uh, you can make a difference. By the way, I told my local um, my local uh, um, counselor that I would make sure that he was not going to be running in the next federal or not f- next municipal election. He's not. We're having it next month. He decided that he would like to step down. He didn't want to be involved anymore, and I think it had to do a lot with my um, bringing to light some of the things that he's done. So. You're welcome. Nice. Uh, I'm just I'm just reading a, an article on this, and it's saying they're on board in Absolutely. principle with the buyback. It says like agree the chief agrees in principle with the gut buyback, but says he needs to see more details before committing his forces involvement. Yet to receive any details on how police agencies will be asked to aid in it and the confiscation. Uh, he broadly supports the initiative to remove weapons. Uh, blah blah blah. You may be drafted. That sounds like I don't know. That sounds like a maybe to me. Yeah, yeah. he's the yeah. municipal Calgary. He may be directed not to. Mm-hmm. Not by the city it, council, but uh, maybe by city council or by no, yeah. no. Their city council, like Edmonton's, are pretty left leaning, and they would support. Oh, good that lord, kind of thing. yeah. Just drive ten minutes out of the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a weird thing to be in, eh? If the province yeah. doesn't support it and the cities do, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be a mass exodus out of the city. Uh, well, it just makes it weird. Yeah. I don't mind if there's, like, differences between provinces, but differences between cities in a province, that gets weird. Yeah. Well, it's starting to look like the U.S. then. I don't mind yeah. that, though. Like, yeah. that's states. Well, no, they have cities as well. They have cities, they have, it's Mm -hmm. weird trying to travel through the U.S. and trying to figure out what you can, can't do, where you can open carry, where you can't open carry, where you can conceal Mm -hmm. carry, where you can't, where you can transport with a rifle that has a pistol grip, where you can't, et cetera. Yeah. 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 It's very messy. Anywho. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But overall, overall, that's positive stuff that uh, some big problems are getting. So we will talk to Michael Lilberg as well about this. I'll drop him a message. Hey, Michael. (laughs) <laughs> give us the deets yeah 
Then we had uh, one final story. GTA single mom gets 10 years for smuggling handguns across U.S.-Canada border. Yeah. 25 farms hidden in vehicle likely did at least four other trips. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. So huh. she worked for Pure Later. I looked her up. She's on LinkedIn. Looked up her Facebook. Facebook's no longer active as well. But she <laughs> was a full stalker on this lady, Kelly. Holy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interesting reason why. Because I was trying to figure out if she was married to one of the, you know, okay, whatever. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I looked at her her history and yeah so she's done it before 25 in the gas tank and she said it was a horrific nightmare um, and how she was treated guess what lady you're going to jail <laughs> 10 years yeah so. she said it was a horrible thing for her family to go through it's like <laughs> yeah but you brought guns into the country you yeah. smuggled guns yeah. and what do you think was gonna happen and where are they going <laughs> as well yeah. yeah yeah exactly those are all going to criminals are going to use so them. do you think your family's all excited about the fact that you're bringing in and again this isn't their first rodeo, so that you've been bringing in illegal guns and selling them. Glad to see a ten-year sentence. I was surprised about that. I was surprised. Yeah, eh, yeah. There's twenty-five guns, though. But twenty-five that they know of that, and they found like yeah. four yeah. other trips that this likely happened. So they pro- she probably brought in like whatever, like a hundred guns, right? Yep. Yep. So that's yep. seventy-five. So if it's or four other trips. That's a hundred other guns that they didn't catch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somewhere around there that are out there circulating. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. okay. And that's it for mm-hmm. that. Uh, we have no new CCFR legal donations, uh, but nope. definitely a great time to support them with everything going on in the uh, upcoming court battle. Uh, you can do that by via EMT to finance at firearmsrights.ca. Become a member so too. Support them. Yeah. And become a member, and, yes. And guess what? If the province of Alberta can become a supporter of the CCFR and a wiener, then you can too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they should get uh, no, they should get a, a membership. Hello. They should get a membership <laughs> of every Hello. citizen of the province. So. Correct. Okay. Correct. Neat. Okay. We'll get into new gun stuff. Uh, what do we have here? I think Apparently, I had some some that were already on there view. before. So <laughs> here, I got I got a couple. Should I cover here. the range view one again? <laughs> <laughs> what about a dragon off? Tactical yeah. Force is bringing in the mm-hmm. type eighty one with like a very dragon off y look to them. Uh they're fifteen hundred bucks starting, and they that's a type eighty one done up like a yeah. dragon off. Done up well, tastefully, tastefully. Okay, right. so the mounts for the scope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Side mount. Yeah, that's what it, that, yes. I'm pretty sure. That's what it should be. That's proper. Yeah. Yeah. Russians, Russians yeah. do that kind of. BS well, because the tops your dust cover. It's so flimsy. You don't want to mount to scope to that's that. That's true too. So I'm looking at it. I'm going. Whoa. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect accuracy from this. No. It's a Type 81 no. underneath there. It's no. going to be like three MOA. Two or three, probably three. Probably more. Looks cool though. More. Yeah. I give it a five point. round waffle pattern magazines to get that full uh, dragon off look. You wouldn't want the big banana mag sticking out of there. And uh, yeah, looks neat. It does indeed. Yeah. This next one, not really applicable to Canadians, but cool tech anyways. Uh, Ruger has their SFAR. Basically, it's a 308 AR, but in the platform or size of a 223 AR. So it's smaller, mm-hmm. it's more compact. It's not that AR-10 size. It's an AR-15 size, but with AR or ah. 308 caliber. Hmm. Just thought it was neat. Imagine we could have those in Canada. That'd be cool to hunt with. Nice lightweight. Yeah. That's still... I'd be okay with actually just keeping the stuff that we already have. like <laughs> And being able to take it out and use it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's, that's the starting point. <laughs> I want cooler stuff. I don't want what we had before. I don't want my BCL 102 back. I want that. <laughs> Let's do better. Yeah. That's better. We want more. Give us 100 more. yards, 1.5 uh, to everything. the MOA for this. Mm-hmm. Now, three, three. I'm going back, by the way. I'm just. <laughs> Depends how many shots. Depends how many shots. If you take one shot, it's M1 MOA. Correct. If you take when three you get shots, a group. Three, I, had three a, I had a question about that. So, so does the MOA increase every shot? Four shots, four MOA. Yeah. 
So when I was explaining, you had to have four MOA to go to our long range, uh, four MOA at 100, and then you could go over to the long range. The guy goes, okay, four MOA for what? How many shots? I said, for a group. And he goes, all of them? And I said, <laughs> yeah. He said, you don't exclude the ones that aren't. <laughs> See that shot there? Well, That's one group. There's another group. <laughs> for for a group, like a group of 10, 20, 100, how many, well, how many do you need yeah. to keep in that for? It's five or three, who cares? Easier, uh, right? Yeah. So I said, well, fire off a group, a grouping of 10 shots and then see if you can get on. Yeah. Well, let's be real. You only need three, three for a group or five, five, five minimum and 100. I told him that. And then I gave him my card. I feel like there's a dick measuring contest where if you're like shooting with people and no, 10 round groups are the, are the minimum what you need for a proper accuracy. And so people will be like, no, 20 round groups. It just it never stops. I use three round groups because I don't care. I know it's a small amount, but you just have to know how to use it. As long as you know how to use it, you're good. What are Correct. we talking about? And we're talking about <laughs> Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. We're just... Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, we'll we'll do the we'll show vlog. again later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> seven me. shot groups. <laughs> are we done with the groups? Should I go on? Yes. Yeah, I think we're done with the groups. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, for tonight's main topic, our esteemed uh, co-host, Adriel, had a great idea to uh, cover what's in your bag. So we're going to talk about what everyone brings to the range for their particular um, sport. Sport? Sports. Once sport. it gets started. Sport. There's sports. I'm gonna, sports. I, I want to do the first one because I'm going to do like a basic range visit uh, cool. loadout. And okay. I think that's like All if right. you guys will have stuff that you'll add or or subtract from that that'll uh, that'll make sense. So um, when I go to the range, there's two things I might bring. Okay. One is I might just use like a range bag. So this is a a, a pretty small range bag. Uh, usually I'll have like my ear pro in here, eye pro, and then a smattering of other stuff. But to be honest, if I go to the range um, just for a quick visit, I don't typically take that that bag. I just take a big tub. So it's just a big bin. Big tub. And uh, I just throw all my stuff in here because it, like, whenever you're packing up to head to the range, you'll have your rifle case. Um, I have my bin. I'll have, like, water and a lot of the kind of stuff separate. But uh, I thought I'd go through my bin. It, it just in case uh, for cases, I really like this uh, this three gun case that, uh, that Cabela's had for 80 bucks or something like that. Okay. So Adriel will. Okay. Join us again Adriel. in a couple minutes. Oh, I was wondering if I, I froze or he froze. No, he just okay. messaged. Apparently, he just lost power, so he'll be back okay. in a couple minutes. Okay. Yep. Uh, I oh. guess I can go next then. Uh, so if I can get this monster on the table, I have what most, what many people take to the rain, the double alpha IPSC bags. I don't know if you guys can see it. So this is typically what you bring for an IPSC match. Yeah, this is typically what I bring for an IPSC match. This is a pretty popular bag. I see quite a few of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. I like I it. Keep my, uh, my I like grip, it because my the grip front... dispenser. I'll shut oh, up. Oh, your chalk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I chalk, yeah. So I keep that tethered to the bag. Yeah. Uh, obviously, for the to pick up brass whenever we do pick up brass. I have my, my rig uh, with my holster and mag pouches and everything, an inner belt tethered to the bag as well uh then it's got all sorts of like pouches and stuff uh in the front i keep all my zip locked i keep all my documents all my red certificates i mean i typically only bring in the one gun but i, I just have everything in there yeah um then inside at the top portion i got my hat Ah, okay. keep you alive. Obviously, ear ear protection. <laughs> I now have my, uh, which I mentioned last week. I have my uh, compressed air dispenser. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And it makes a nice in a pinch. It makes a lovely hair dryer as well. 
<laughs> well, what kind of uh, what kind of ear pro do you use? I have the um, the Sordin MSA Sordin. You got Ooh, the nice. you got your high end. Nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I go big or I don't go. Uh, I got all That's not with ammo. ammo. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got all my uh, in the front of the bag, which I can't really show. I've got all my 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 mags. I had to take six with me to the to matches. Yeah. Um, I always have five on my belt, and then I have well, I have six. But I keep one on 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 the magnet, and then I have my ammo. Uh, you can't see it by ammo case, MPM. which I put my name on it because a lot of people have these cases, so I put my name yeah. on it. I feel like I'm back in like elementary school. Um, <laughs> Show and tell. Miss, yeah. miss. Yeah. Labeling everything. And I have <laughs> another very popular thing, the Maglula. Yep. Loader, yep. Lula, yep. Which I also have my name on. Because <laughs> everyone color? else has one. It's black. It's black, yeah, which so is another very common, common and they're very common one. Right. Mine's a purple um, one. I got my mag. We then I have my traditional mag brush. Mm-hmm. And then I have actually some tools. Not that it's anything fancy, just uh actually no, I don't have it. I had some tools and some some Allen keys and stuff to if I had to make any mm-hmm. adjustments when I had my red dot, which I don't even use anymore. Um at the bottom of the bag I actually have my gun in in the uh in a soft case with the lock on it. Uh that's really it. Then I also have the cart that goes with this uh with this bag. So I, you know, the foldable cart that you can so that way if it's a bigger range and you're going from the stages are kind of spread out. I'm not lugging this heavy bag around. Um I'm also being lazy, I guess, too. So uh it's called work smart. Yeah. And uh, that's really it for my. Uh, I've been trying to take water to the matches and stuff, especially for those those hot days and stuff. I never really bring energy bars, but I know that's a big thing, you know, for people to have like energy bars or little snacks or whatever. So that's yep. not something I normally do, but that's it for me. Awesome. Okay. Adriel, you want to well, do you want to finish this up? Because you cut it yeah. halfway between. Okay. Yeah, power, power just flickered. Um, Three gun the bag. Uh, I have a case like this. This will hold four handguns in it, yep. and it was pretty inexpensive. So I use that for pistols if I'm going to take pistols out to the range. In terms of what's in the bin, right on top, targets, stapler. Uh, I like. I've got a little case like this for ear pro and eye pro. Yeah. The thing I like about this, I have one big bin that I throw everything in, uh, and so I don't like to throw fragile stuff in it. This makes my Eye Pro and Ear Pro, not Protected. fragile because it yeah. uh, holds them in there. Like Mo, everything has to be labeled. So these ones are <laughs> these ones have labels on them because everyone has the Howard lights, and you take them yeah, off, and someone else yeah. picks them up. Are they yours anymore or not? Yeah, possessions nine tenths <laughs> law, right? They're not. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Keep getting told. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I'm gonna go to the range, I want like a steady rest that I can uh, shoot off of. Uh, I remember. A lot of times when I first started sighting things in before before I was even a member of a range, if I was sighting in at the farm or something like that, I'd use a rolled up jacket or something like that. Not accurate. It's not accurate. You're not going to get a, a true representation of what your rifle's doing. You're not going to get a true sight in. You might be like an inch or two off because you just didn't shoot that well. Mm-hmm. Nice heavy rest is going to change that. And then I might do this for a back rest. This is an optional thing, though. So if I've got this. I can pop that out front and at the back and I can just make a fist underneath the, the rear of the rifle and get accurate enough. Like I'll yep. be, I'll be shooting one of my groups like that. So that's not such a big deal. Uh, if I'm going to go long range or if I'm going to sight for someone, or even I'm going to shoot at the 100, you don't really necessarily see bullet holes at 100. I might bring a spotting scope, uh, put it right the right way. So this spotting scope, I can see bullet holes at 100. I can stick my camera on this, and I can see bullet impacts at two and 300. So Which is really cool. That's really nice to be able to do because uh, sometimes you want to know where your gun's shooting long range. Sometimes you're like, ah, I think it's on at 100, but it's like it's like quite far to the left or right at, uh, at longer distances. Uh, tripod for said uh, thing. I might do like – I have like a little tabletop one, but if I put it on the same bench as I shoot from, it gets affected while I shoot, which is no yeah. good. Yeah. 
So this lets me put it very close to my gun, but still not doesn't affect it uh, from the shot, uh, which is something that I like. Again, if I'm shooting long range. Um, so when I pack, I pack guns, then I pack mags, then I pack ammo. So I've got at least those God. three um, mm -hmm. that I've always got packed. Um, this is my little box O possibles that I, uh, that I take with me. You can see in the top there, it's got my uh, my reg certs in there, which are uh, laminated, so they don't get to make them so they don't get to roughed up too much. Mm -hmm. Little bottle of oil, just in case you know need to spruce things up here. Cosmoly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some extra ear pro. I always like stuff lots of extra ear pro in here because uh, sometimes I screw up and I forget some other stuff. So if I at least if I have this thing, I've got some ear pro in there. I got some matches in sure. case I need to, like, I don't know, start a fire or something like that. <laughs> this guy, this guy gets yeah. used. Well, at, at my range, there's a fire pit, so you could, like, do some hot dogs or something like that, right? Uh, this little guy gets used all the time because I've got uh, Phillips and a couple of Torx and Allen keys in there. Just the most common stuff. But those Torx ones, yeah, you can use them for some Allen key stuff if you really need to in a pinch. So that's handy. Yeah. I got my conditions paper, which I don't even know if it's necessary. Uh, a Leatherman in there, which oh, cool. is nice, nice and handy. Yeah, I mean... Slam fire patches in case I run into a listener. Uh, a couple of random Allen keys, just the most common uh, sizes. Um, I probably don't want to get me pulled over because this will look uh, really terrible if a cop goes through here. But this is just like uh, acetaminophen. I see and, Tylenol. Uh, <laughs> I see acetaminophen. I see also antihistamines. I don't know what those other ones are. Maybe they're anti-diarrhea. I have no idea. Those are the good ones. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Triple a Claritin. Uh, on the other side, I've got a little scope wipe. I've got some concentrated camping soap. This is for washing mm. lead off of fingertips. Yep. And that kind of thing nice, gets used nice. a lot. Good idea. Uh, as I shoot a shadow, I have a spare um, lock because sometimes these break in the Seagull 75s. Hmm. I've got some AAA and a random assortment of staples in there as well. So this is a good good enough for like I don't know ninety five percent of the stuff. I know some guys bring out like a huge toolkit, which is kind yeah. of funny. If you go to a three gun match, you're like, oh my god, I need a 764 Allen, someone's gonna have it. Someone's yeah. gonna have that in their toolkit, and you're gonna be like, "Wow, God, I'm I'm happy you're taking this around." But yeah, I don't I don't, I don't take everything around for 100 percent of all eventualities. I just take like 99. percent And even as is, the screwdriver gets used a lot. The leather get, the Leatherman gets used some of the time. Yep. The rest of this stuff mm -hmm. almost never. Yeah. The, ear, the spare ear pro every once in a while I, I i try to stuff ear pro in as many of my eyeglass cases like as i can so that if i need to i pull out my my safety glasses and my uh, ear pro at the same time but sometimes i take I, sometimes i forget the eye pro and i have to use like my van eye pro which is just sitting in there yeah. nice it's funny because i am the guy with for a big three gun match that has the big toolbox and all the parts for guns i don't own and that just in case. Oh, you need oh, let me check my alley. It's like all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meticulously arranged. Yeah, not, not me. Not yeah. Me. <laughs> uh, who's next here? Kelly? Attendee okay. of Maple Seed? Sure. So I also bring out, so I'm going to tell you what I bring. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to tell you what I bring to a Maple Seed, but I'm going to talk to you about what you should bring to a Maple Seed. I will right. talk about minimum and then to be really comfortable because what I bring to a maple seed is literally towed around in a uh, 12 foot trailer. So you're not going to be towing that. So you're mentioning clown car. <clears throat> it might, but my range bag is like a clown car. I have everything and mm. anything in it. So some of the things that I typically bring that uh, Adriel did not mention, I'll bring a uh, transparent tape. So for people who are cross eyed dominant, so I can throw tape onto their glasses so I also have a Leatherman. Uh, I have staplers. Uh, I bring two of them because one is none, right? So no, you bring one, and then then you just rely on other range people for the rest if that if it breaks. Yeah. So yeah, there should be a bunch of other staplers only. up there. 
What? <laughs> don't take a J21. Don't buy a J21 stapler. It's garbage. <laughs> buy a T50. That is it. There are no other staplers. The other staplers are <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. I, bring, uh, I bring staplers. I bring a, I can't take it off my range bag, but I have a complete trauma kit with C Toms as well as Israeli bandages, etc. Uh, on the other side, I also have a complete boo boo kit that includes things like um, bug bite. Uh, I also have those random drugs that are in there that are they're not drugs. Well, technically, they are. <laughs> <laughs> if you need an antihistamine, if you need a Tylenol, etc., I have it. Um, I carry everything's in Ziplocs because uh, it tends to get a little moist at a maple seed. So I carry a cleaning kit, which I break out every time I go to the range. So it has a couple of different types of lubrication. It has a bore brush. It has a snake. Uh, and it also has Loctite, blue Loctite as well. So we can put somebody's lock down somebody's scope that falls off. Uh, in the bag, I also have a baggie full of 1022 megs because <laughs> uh, I give out a lot of them and then people also take them too and they forget to return them. One of the big things that we uh, I also throw in there is I throw in, this is uh, just a cheapie, but it's a, range, a rain poncho that you can get at the dollar store so you mm, can nice. cover up firearms. Um, do you mark your mags? How do you mark your mags? I mark them with my name. So I take one of those really nice little um, silver pens. Need a paint, paint pen. Need a paint so pen it's a stuff. silver pen and you write your name. All right. So I have uh, alternate so cheek risers for my uh, Hunter X22 stock. I carry, not only do I carry, I carry hunting guy sti or hunting guy stickers as well as stickers slam fire, uh, just in case I meet somebody. Also um, uh, well, there's my, both my CCFR as well as my Project Maple Seed uh, cards. So I'll give those out. The other thing that I actually have, and they're packed in Baggies are extra socks and gloves because, again, at Maple Seed, we have rain and therefore my feet get cold and therefore I'm miserable. So, like just your Maple Seeds, though, the ones in Alberta have all been like really nice, even <laughs> well, this these year. These ones this year have been all nice except for that one. Hmm. Uh, yeah. And what else? I have, you have to have one of these if you don't have anything. I can't get it. Just give me a sec. Okay, I'll get it out in a second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fat wrench. So I have a fat wrench that I bring with me. I just don't want my rifle to fall. So let's talk about that first. So if you're going to a maple seed, you're going to bring a rifle that's uh, reliable. Uh, preferences to have a semi-automatic so that unless you can really shoot a bolt action and like slick as not Fast. as they say. Yeah. So bring a reliable firearm. If you have a sling, bring one. If not, we will actually provide you one. Uh, if you please make sure that you have studs, but if not, we can work around it as well. So this is my rifle. I love it. I let everybody try it. So if you come to a mat, uh, if you come to a maple seed, you don't have a rifle, I'll let you borrow mine. Um, and then I'll tell you everything that's on it, and then you'll have to buy it. <laughs> If you're at a maple seed, you're going to be bringing your own lunch. So bring lunch and water. That's actually part of my range bag as well. I have a pocket on the side and I bring waters because you need water anytime. So I have snacks, lunches. Maple seeds are like they're a long time at the range. It's eight to ten hours. So you're going to have to eat. Um, I carry one of these. This is a it's a rain punch. It's a rain gear thingy. So it comes in its own little bag. It's a jacket. Mm. I attach it to my bag as well because, again, it's a maple seed. It's going to rain. You rent yourself so. Um, attached to my range bag is my Ear Pro. You can actually, I take it off and I put it onto my belt and then I just clip my Ear Pro on it. Instead of saying, where the hell is my ear? I know that they're hanging off my belt. So my Ear Pro, I have mine labeled with my name. As opposed to a mark, or, you know, with a piece of masking tape on. Um, so I have really good quality. So these ones are the 3M. Uh, and they have the gel cups that I've replaced on them as well. So I, again, if you're at the range for 12 hours, you're going to want to wear those. Um, 
I bring lots and lots and lots and lots of ammo, so make sure you have 350 rounds if you're going to Maple Seed, and that's of the same kind. People got different kinds of ammo to try them out and see which one works best for you. What if it's <laughs> just like like a Christmas like candy cane load? Every <laughs> mag is a new surprise. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's not going to work. That was my rifle, by the way, that fell on the floor. Um, it's not going to work because you're going to have different impacts all over the place and and that's no bueno. So make sure that you have a, touch your ammo before you come. I actually, I've had people say, well, why don't you... That was my <laughs> ammo can. I've, I've had people say to me, well, tell us what ammo we should bring. And I'm going, no, you have to go out and test your ammo. So find whichever one works best for your gun and then buy 350 or brick of it and bring that. And then there's other people that'll bring one of f- box of 50 of everything and just so that they can test it out. I'm going, don't do that. Um, <laughs> bring, just bring 350 rounds of CCI standard velocity there. Right. Yeah. It'll Done. be fine. Done. Standard velocity CCI. That's my standard. Go out and buy that if you don't know what to buy. But you can actually, so I have Ely here. Oh, this one's green. So look at that. Nice. Sweet. <laughs> That's Fantastic, boring. but like not necessary for 25 meters. <laughs> no, but that's me. I have. Smells good. Hundred... Yeah, it does smell really mm-hmm. good. You're going to want a chair. So bring one. You'll be comfortable. You're going to also want, by the way, you're not going to want, you're going to have to have one of these. Shooting so, mat? Shooting mat. Of shooting course. mat. So the shooting mats themselves, if you're going to a maple seed, you should bring something to lay down on. Uh, if you don't have a shooting mat, you can use a yoga mat. You can use, you know, those blankets that you move furniture in. Uh, but these, these are mats that you can get at Cabela's. And I think, are they still on sale this week? I knew they Every were once in a week. while. Like watch for Wednesdays and all sorts of other days. They'll sell them for 59 bucks. That mat is dirty. I've never had a mat that dirty. Hey, I don't clean my mats. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have screws in my shop so that they can dry, so I can hang them to dry. I have told you that it's rained at all the maple seeds that I've ever. No, not this year. It was all sunny, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's last dirty, year. Dirty. You're not gonna wash them in between years. <laughs> no. So I have a Wheeler uh, fat wrench as well, so that we can tighten torque and and uh, do any on the line modifications. Uh, That's for you as an instructor, though. Like an attendee wouldn't need a a fat wrench. Some of them do. Some Some of them. them... Okay, the ones that have really screwed up (laughs) and not followed the make sure your rifle's ready to go instruction. The ones, (laughs) the ones that need the blue Loctite as well. (laughs) (laughs) That's that. Um, Nine times out of ten, anything that I need, I'll use a Leatherman. So if I need to, there's a knife on it. There is a screwdriver. There is. there's also a set of pliers as well. So nine times nice. out of ten, that's what I need. The pick, uh, pick on those things. Sometimes people yeah. get twenty-two shells stuck in their chamber, and I've seen someone on the clock rip the pick, the pick out, psh, get that case out, reload, and keep going. I, <laughs> nice. nails. I have a really long yeah. fingernail. I just dig it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's typically what you need to bring. That's you as a participant. Uh, if you don't have a rifle, we will provide a loaner for a rifle for you if we have them available. If you don't have a mat, we may have a mat available. So we'll provide that. If you don't have a chair, we even bring chairs. That's not everybody. That's me because I have that traveling road show as well. Um, and yeah, but you need to bring a positive attitude. And you also need to prepare for the weather. So <laughs> dress in layers and make sure everything is waterproof. Very that's, good. That's Project Maple Seed. Yeah, I got other things in there, but it's like pertinent to Ipsic. So when I say it's like clown, my bag is like a clown car. I got everything <laughs> in there. I got the rules for Ipsic. I can place my sights, everything like that. But this is all stuff for Maple Seed. Well, okay. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Who's next? Right. Half? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so. I won't just decide that I will do that. I'm not going to go for a multi-day trip. That would be your, your camping setup, so your tent and everything. But, but even if I'm just going out for a day, this is what I have in my bag. 
And to start off with, I'll start off with the bag. So a few years ago, uh, me and my buddy bought these, I believe they're Vorn bags. And in there, I got everything I need. And one cool feature with this is it's even got a slot where I can put my rifle, have it up there, and all you do is you pull pull on this, and it unhooks the buckles, and you can pull your rifle out. So especially when you're carrying a bag, it's actually really nice, effective. Uh, go through the bag itself. So on the front, I have a medic kit. And it's really easy. I can rip that off. Um, I don't actually carry bear spray. That's actually a little mini fire extinguisher that I got in one of those subscription boxes and figured, hey, it can go on there. So this is not any curated uh, medic kit. It's just got a bunch of just essentials, random stuff. It's got some hydration salts, burn stuff, tensor bandages, normal bandages, even a survival blanket in here. Uh, bandages, a uh, splint roll, tourniquet, and any other kind of bandage that you might really need. Bl uh, moleskin for blisters, tweezers, uh, usually a pair of shears in there, but apparently I need to go through my medic bag before next time out. But try and just basically cover anything non like, well, try and carry what I can without getting too crazy. This bag is nice. You can you get organized Standard with it. Standard eye size. That's, that's, that's fine for taking on there. You can just stick that to the <laughs> back, right? Yep. Yeah, and it's it's nice because this bag actually has a couple molly straps that you can put stuff on here. So with that, um, I always carry some extra stuff. So I do have an ammo wallet just in case. Have a few extra rounds in there. I have an emergency bivy in case I get stuck out there. And this is just a lightweight little bivy sack, little plastic, and you can just basically sleep in it. Inside is lined just like your uh, emergency blanket material. So just in case you get stuck out hmm. there and you have to spend the night. You don't have to do like the, the old timey, like build a lean to and put moss on it and stuff. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll help. Um, Shit tickets. I need to update my role. <laughs> <laughs> this, this bag gets used. This bag gets used. And so uh, I do have some hockey tape in there. Sharpening stone. And then I do have a, a multi-tool. A Leatherman. And this is just in my base, my bottom pocket. In the top, usually I have my fire kit. So I have this kit with a bunch of fire making stuff. Yeah, and I try out different products for, for making fires. Like I blaze one I've been trying is this uh, hot snot and it's a gel put out there. Hmm. With a ferro rod, it takes a bit to get ignited, but it can get ignited. But if you have a match or a lighter, it lights up fast and it doesn't take much. So that, that'll do you for a few years of fires. Uh, there is just a waterproof container. And these matches that are in here these are the uh zippo or no these aren't zippo ones i have zippo ones which uh be sure when you light them because you can dunk dunk them in water dirt anything and they stay going you can't put them out until they get down to the wood so cool. these are just your standard windproof matches and i bring a couple ferro rods with me uh this one is of the ones I have, it's um, my favorite one. It, uh, I won't spark it because it actually throws a really good spark when you get it good. Just a small little striker. And uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. A poly striker. Yeah, poly striker. That's the one. And of all the ones I've gotten, this has become, could become my favorite. Cool. And this just, I this made it in there because I was trying it. It's one of those little survival ones. It turned out it was actually not that great. Like it's a little bit, but it's it was actually crap. Really, I didn't like it. And these have actually been my favorite fire starters. And all they are is a uh, cotton swab put in wax, 
Now, this is my favorite because I just finished it this last trip. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to try making my own and just do with a paraffin wax. So they're waterproof. You just break up the fibers and one spark off of this and it lights right up. Throw some twigs mm. on there and there you go. So that's my fire kit. And that's always in there just so I have multiple ways to start a fire. That's also, good. in the top, I keep some kind of bar, protein bar or cliff bar, something. I'll usually have some uh, trail mix or something in here as well and put some water in. Always have a headlamp. I mm -hmm. usually have one at, or, or two headlamps, depending. Um, I have some ribbon in case yep. I need to mark a trail or anything. Hmm. Surveyor's ribbon. Uh, in case I need to get fancy, just nice and easy. Received this same subscription thing, but got it's just a bunch of knots, different different types of knots, just in case I forget or need to do something fancy. I I have that just just in case. Yep, it doesn't take up any room. Season, you can just leave it in the bedroom and <laughs> yeah. I have an assortment <laughs> of carabiners <laughs> and he just line ties. Moved right on past that one. <laughs> I didn't even hear. Sorry. You, you can have listen. To repeat that. You can listen to it too later, same as Mo. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, have a assortment of uh, carabiners and quick ties, S clips, and like, they don't. It looks like a bunch, but it doesn't actually take up much in the top pocket. Yep. Uh, engineer's compass. Just in case you know, the phone doesn't work, it's nice. It's always good to have backup. It's nice to be able to use it as well to understand yeah. how to use it. If the phone doesn't work, I, I, I die. <laughs> well, that's what's nice with these new apps. Like you got iHunter in that they work without cell service, which is great because where I hunt, I don't have cell service. Mm -hmm. So Jeez. inside, I have a couple dry bags just in case. Mm -hmm. And this is stuff that just always lives in my bag. Uh, a little trifold chair in case I want to go sit down someplace. It's nice. Compact. compact there's more compact ones but it fits right in the side uh little hatchet mm -hmm. you are and the all other side usually out. goes but oh, yeah you're all prepped out yeah i mean like the bag compresses down so i can actually get carry like a quarter at a time or whatever uh, yeah. and the other side i put my bugle tube i'm elk hunting and then also in the bag uh there's actually a offset of the the gun pocket, there's a nice small one, so that's where I put my kill kit. Okay. So with my kill kit, I have my game bags, and I've actually really liked these. They're they're like a cheesecloth, but they're they're a heavier style, but they're still stretchy, super strong, and they actually compress really nicely. So what I did, um, it's open because I used it on my bear, but uh, I took them out of the package and just vacuum packed them and was able to get the packaging down smaller. So it okay. fit I thought the clear stuff piece. is your Dexter costume, but okay. <laughs> do, you, do you know who, who makes it and where you got it? Uh, I don't know who makes this. I go, I bought these from Trapper Gourds up here in Grand Prairie. Okay. So, and uh, I actually just recently went out to realize last week going out that I had used a couple game bags. So I went out and bought some new ones and I did have a big uh, canvas style one. That I had bought, and that is currently holding the hide. So I bought a few of these. They're 40 by 48 inch heavy canvas bags. So they're really tough, but they're not as breathable as as these ones. That, yeah. So I, I don't know. And they don't pack down as nice. I mean, yeah. trying to get that canvas packed down to the same as what I get these guys in. And these will stretch to a whole quarter, no problem. Hmm, nice. So they're good, reusable, but... There's that. And then my knives. I always have a oh, few different knives. knives with me. So I basically use these two if I'm actually removing a quarter or something. So it's nice to have two, especially you can have one for just getting into like the ball sockets or the joints because that's going to dull up really fast as soon as you get in there to deal with that and this one's interesting because it actually has a uh, gut hook if you're into that built right into the handle. Oh, oh cool. weird. I've never seen that before. Yeah. So it's who just. Makes, who's, who makes that? 
That is a revolt. Revolt knife. Mm. Okay. So see if I can get that there. Yeah. But yeah, it's literally the, the spine, just the insert in the in there. It is nicer to use that if you've got them hung up and you're mm-hmm. trying to hold the guts back while you're doing the the like the the gutting. It's uh mm-hmm. it's a bit of a chore trying to do that without yeah. the gut hook. Yeah. Yep. I've used this one too. And then I always have a good set of um uh, skinning knives so this is a uh what is this uh knives of alaska skinning knife nice super sharp i did the mistake of trying to gut with this don't do it you will stab yourself yeah you will stab yourself with that and i actually won this set at a shotgun match and it's a really nice set and then it's got a little they call the uh, muskrat, little muskrat skinning knife as well. Yeah. Nice. So, That's a rounded edge there. Yeah. Yeah. So I always carry at least this. And usually I have like a Swede saw or something like that in case I have to cut up the rib cage. And then, so that's basically for just a day's hunting what I carry in, in my bag. And then, of course, I have my rifle that I have, but that's usually self contained. I even have extra rounds on the butt pad. Mm-hmm as well and then i have my bino harness which in here i keep a lens cloth attached my pack of um all my diaphragm calls now i got four different diaphragm calls in there uh just standard mouth call some wind tracker and then i bought binoculars Super nice. Uh, these are the Leupold's BXTs. They are 10, 10 power uh, binoculars. What are they like? A 10 by 42? 10 by 42, yeah, 10. probably. Yeah. Nice, nice size. Fit in here really nicely. Does and then. Come, do they come with I, the case so that. You know? uh, they don't come with this case. They do come with a nice case. Uh, I actually have a picture of it on my Instagram. Okay. There, you can bigger, attach though. to uh, Molly, and that this one is bigger. Like this is actually yeah. Yeah. quite a big. Like, in I keep my tags and everything okay. right there. It's actually yeah. got places for ammo in there as well, but that's just that's where I keep my tags and everything. And then I keep my rangefinder on the side. You're not sponsored by Leopold at all. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. I know. Okay. <laughs> Actually, t- t- it's Korth Group, not Loop. Correct, but they yeah they yeah, I, distribute. Yes, yeah. Korth Group is fantastic. Oh, I absolutely love them. They've been treated me very good over the years. Yeah, and... they're one of our sponsors too. Yeah. So they give back to the community. Yeah. Good on. Oh, absolutely. Maple seed. Yeah, very yep. good. Yeah. So that is basically, I mean, I'll have some water in there too, like a, yeah. just like a Nalgene bottle, or I'm actually thinking of getting a Camelback to put in there. Sweet. Hardcore. But it looks like a lot, but it's actually not as heavy as you would think, like for just like a day hunt and that. And it's funny because growing up, we were always minimalistic. And then I just started hunting with a bag and it's... Holy it, it, it becomes so much more comfortable and much more yeah. easier when you have everything that you need right there with you. Yeah, and I'm trying to do hikes and in sometimes not great country in that. And I just got to the mindset I just want to be prepared just in case yeah. something yeah, happens. For sure. Just in case you find an elk that's bugling at you <laughs> and you want to be prepared. Yeah. Correct. I've, I've got my kit right next to me. Do you mind if I show like a really minimalist setup? I don't have nearly as much gear as you like. You've got all like it's all really good stuff and it looks all applicable. Uh, but I've got like a very stripped down version of uh, uh, of stuff that I take. What do you got? Pretty stripped down. Uh, all right. Fine. Orange jacket so I don't get shot. Uh, okay. Lots of pockets. <laughs> in it. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, Headlamp? Yeah. 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 Headlamp. Yeah. Uh, one of these things for sitting on because uh, I don't like sitting on logs and sometimes yeah. you can't sit on a log. So, okay. Something that's nice and warm to sit on. A little uh, pillow. My primary, like all my 
garbage is uh, just a bino pack. There's a knife. There's a call, which almost never comes out because I typically just yell at the deer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they stop. <laughs> uh, this is for my grouse hunting. So I've got some uh, 22 ammo in there. I've got a set of binos. You are pared down. Uh, there's my tags in the back. Oh my gosh. And uh, the last time I was hunting, uh, just, a, just a real basic pair of shooting sticks. Now, these are just good for seated. Or if you're like on the an edge of a bank or something like that, they're perfect yeah. for that. But they're not; these are not super flexible for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I often find I use them because they're just uh, they're the right they're size. A little bit more. Thing. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah get usually, a, a I, I actually more... have a trigger trigger stick, but I'm actually thinking, and I'm actually curious on your thoughts. I'm thinking of actually going to trekking poles and then trekking just being poles. just crossing them and using that. Well, and if you got oh, like a little enough. Velcro thing on there, like if you could get like a little Velcro. Uh, you know what would work? The keeper for your shooting belt. If you put the yeah. keeper, just give you a little bit of resistance so that as you had the gun on it, it would just hold it together. Right. That would mm. do it just fine, yeah. right? But Good idea. yeah, these are I would I would use trekking poles if I had to hike rather than these because these serve no other purpose. Yeah. Um, but it, boy, they're nice to shoot off yeah. of. They add so much stability. To, like you put this on the front of the gun, the back of the gun, you just kind of hold and yeah. And that's, uh, I'm just going through my kit. I'm not going to find anything else though. No, that's it. That's it. That's so, it. Uh, range yeah. finder if I got to shoot far. Uh, knife if I've got to do some skinning. Because that other one's just like a little folder that's like a right. poke. Yeah. You, so utilitarian kind stuff. of thing. Yeah. yeah. That's Kyle yeah. And, that's, and that's Adriel's stuff. But that's for two <laughs> different styles of hunting because Kyle's going Correct. out for like a longer trek. That's Correct. good for half a day at most. Right. That's like you're going to go out for the morning, do your hunt, come back to camp. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's good for nothing else. So I have a quick question for you. I know that we've kind of covered the topic quite well, um, but do you have different bags or different boxes or Tupperware containers, Adriel, uh, for different? So do you have different bags for different things? So do you have a go bag, an it's a bag, a everyday utility bag, a hunting bag, or do you just change it out for everything that you do? Change it out. I change it out every time. I have a my maple seed bag, which is like just just got my maple seed stuff in it. But everything for everything else, I'll change out. It's a pain in the butt because for hunting, you see, like this is really stripped down. If I'm going in cold weather, I got to take different stuff. If I'm going mm -hmm. in warm, I, it's I always have to change it around, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But mm -hmm. uh, okay, show of hands. Somebody, you have a go bag though, like a I shit hit the fan bag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I don't. We have a couple. Mine's kind of half tore apart right now. Okay. I, I Well, I used to have a get-home bag in my truck. When I was working on oil field sites and everything, I had a get-home bag that, yeah, if I broke down or something, I could spend yeah. the night. And I work from home, so. <laughs> You're pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we covered, get, uh, we covered the get-home bags and the go bags, uh, mm, I think, at the beginning of the pandemic. I think it might have been one yeah. of our, uh, yeah. our yeah, mini episodes. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I was just interested in hearing if you have different bags for different things. Okay. I think everybody has a good understanding of the stuff that you need yeah. to bring in. Yeah. And or they're confused and wondering really why they need that much or. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, can, you can show different things. Like this is yep. typically what you recommend, or these are the things that we bring. So they don't have to bring everything yep. or they can build their kit as they go. They don't need to have yeah, everything sure. right away. Add, add, subtract. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and it all like with the hunting bag, like like Adriel said, it depends on the type of hunting you're doing. Like that's just my general setup. But set up mm -hmm. from the weekend kind of thing. Yeah, if I was hunting someone's property and I was minutes from the truck kind of thing, yeah, that I would not be. Yeah. Yeah. Example. So, for example, if I'm hunting out at Kelly's, I'm up shooting off her duck, so I don't need anything. <laughs> From the you need tub. to bring your, your swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> you need a towel. You need a coaster, a coaster yeah. for your beverage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. I got yeah, spoiled. It very uh, much. It, it very much varies depending on what you got to do. So uh, similar for a maple seed. You know, I've I've got my maple seed bag, but if it's in like really inclement weather. I'll probably have like another bin worth of stuff, like uh, jackets and maybe even like warm pants. Uh, 
It's yep. going to be raining. I'm going to have a whole other set of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I've got to customize based on what's going to happen. But yep. I think like the the cool thing for this for, for listeners or viewers might be just like stealing some of the ideas that we've got. And yeah, I think what so they, too. What they'd like for their stuff, right? Yeah. 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 We just throw it all out there. Yes, literally, That's I threw good. the stuff on the floor, and you heard yeah. things banging. <laughs> That's funny because Mark Plant commented, yeah, there's gonna be a little bit range of bag up went to episode. range trailer with Kelly." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the trailer that I had was a little four by six trailer, and then I got a bigger trailer, and <laughs> it's like goldfish. Uh, they tend to get, although it's not that bad right yet. So, but, <laughs> yeah, I went from. <laughs> Throwing stuff in the back of the car to trailer to a big trailer. So, but obviously you don't need to do that. All you need to do is, you know, bring a couple of things, bring a rifle, some ammo and a lunch. And yep. then you're good to go for a maple seed. And that's that. Yep. I've got too much ammo packed for gross. One <laughs> box of 50 is enough. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mo, why don't we... Uh, we can move on uh, to listener <laughs> feedback. Have you missed me? <laughs> uh, Remember yes. you said it's a it's a whiskey night, so yeah, it's a whiskey night. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for listener feedback, we do have an email. I can I can read it. Uh, Hi, sure. Slamfire Crew. I'm a fairly new gun owner. I have two long guns and nine handguns on the way. Once my transfer is all clear, I'm he looking for some right. recommendations for a decent uh, quality gun safe for storage of the above firearms. Space is fairly limited, so I'm currently in an, an apartment. What brands do okay. I generally recommend? Any would be greatly appreciated. Cheers, Zach. So if he's in an apartment, he's going to want something that's light and movable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Stack on cabinets work for that. They're cheap, yes. light. And they're light. And yeah. Yeah. awesome. Nine handguns. Yep. Nine yep. handguns means you got to do something like weird for that like no that's yeah, that's not do, a yeah. normal loadout most people have more long guns than handguns uh that i know um you're gonna need like something wide that'll that'll fit lots of those things or you'll need like yeah. uh racks or the rods a rack or yes like a rack yeah. Yeah. yeah get the rods there's rods on amazon as well they have the the tubing rubber tubing yeah. dipped rubber dipped or mm. dipping tubing shrink wrap rods tubing. and racks rods and racks Yes. Yep. You don't just stack them in a pile straight in the bottom of the safe. <laughs> yeah. What am I looking yeah, yeah. for here? Just toss, just toss them in there. <laughs> so the name itself, stack on, is not what you want to do. But it's yeah. cheap. They are cheap, no, and you can no you can get them at you can get them at Canadian Tire, and it's lightweight. And just make sure that you secure it to your wall. Only when they're on sale. Never buy at the at the retail price. They'll go for like half price when they're on sale. That is correct. Yeah, don't buy a stack on at full price. It. No. Yeah. I mean, if you got a buddy, you can get an actual safe from <laughs> PV Mart, Canadian Tire, wherever. That's going to have yep. the pockets on the door for your handgun. It's just going to be a couple mm. hundred pounds heavier, and yeah, just, it'd be perfect. Hey, if you have an elevator in the apartment, and yeah, the wanted... dolly, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're carrying it upstairs, no, <laughs> no, not good. So Mark Laplante uh, was talking about uh, sighting in his crossbow after shooting his um, handguns. A noticeable flinch after six months. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, you'll get that. Is it a flinch, or you're into, or you're trying to drive the recoil? Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Okay. We have a Cabela's link now on our website, slamfireradio.com. So if you go through there uh, by using that link to help support the show, and we'll talk about your purchases uh, once per week. Hey, do we have Sound anything? Once, How per often are we? Once, once per month. month. Yes, not let's the, do not, once. Not oh. this week. <laughs> okay. Okay. Once per month. I apologize. And we reserve um, the right to make fun of you the- for your purchases? Mm, or try to guess yes. at what you're yeah. doing with those oh, purchases. Oh, that's actually a better idea. So throw something in just weird. <laughs> the tape and the boar okay. butter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, duct tape? A shovel? <laughs> <laughs> 
pasta strain. Playing knife. Yeah. Okay. It's a PVC tube, one um, shotgun shell. <laughs> we have no feedback from YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Uh, if you'd like to email the show, please do so, and we'll read your uh, letter online. Um, do so at slamfireradio at gmail.com. If you'd like to support yeah. the show, you could do so through uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash slamfire radio. And uh, do we have, does anybody have any shout outs this evening? I got a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Go around Every the time. room. Oh, okay. Uh, I want to say to Russ Rodriguez, I want to say congratulations on going down to the U.S. He went down for the Northern, Northeastern Rimfire Series. He came in first place. Nice. So the Canadians represented down there. All the Canadians. So first overall, third overall. So Matthew uh, Wampat, Matthew Hick, mm-hmm. he came in third overall. Awesome. And yeah, the Canadians dominated in every division. So I just wanted to say congratulations to Russ. And because he came in first place, he's going to be going down to he's going to be going down to Texas in December. So for the Nationals. Nice. Cool. Good for him, eh? Awesome. That was his goal this year, and he realized his goal. Congratulations. So I also wanted to say thank you to Tony from uh, my local Trap and Ski Club. Tony took home my remember when I was saying my shotgun, something was up with it and it wouldn't mm-hmm. Anyway, so he took it home with him. He took it all apart. He said everything was fine. Nothing was broken. It was clean, and he didn't know what was going on with it. He put it back together and gave it to me uh, at the range, not on Wednesday, but this Wednesday before. I took it out because I said, well, I'm going to try it out, see what's going on, see if it's still not shooting. It shot perfectly. So whatever mm-hmm. he did, nice. it worked. So did I you now have, have... Uh, maybe have the safety on? No, because <laughs> I looked several times. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Did he say what it was? No, he couldn't figure it out. Oh, he, really? he couldn't figure it out either. He said he texted me a couple of days ago, and because he wasn't there, um, he wasn't there last time I used it. So he said, "Listen, I'm going to be going up to Toronto to my gunsmith. You want me to take it?" I said, "No, whatever you did, it worked. So hmm. it's perfect. Cool." Um, I also wanted to say thank you to the new instructors that stepped up. So we had three newbies on the line uh, last week and they did an amazing job. Like I feel like I can, I can basically stay home now on the weekends because we have some really good instructors. And I wanted to say, nice. Doug, say thank you to Doug Johnson. Doug was one of the newbies last week, but uh, also for supplying the Jamesons for tonight's show. So thanks. <laughs> he it's provides the delicious. fuel for the fire. <laughs> yeah. The fire I, that is the tire fire. Of yeah, it's show. a castmate. Yeah. I forgot I had this. No, this one's the stowed edition. Yeah. Nice. It's awesome. delicious. Uh, my shout outs are for my fellow Maple Seed instructors, Ted and Brian. Thanks for helping me Yay. out this weekend. Made it uh, excellent and uh, yeah, felt well equipped. It's very nice having other instructors on the line with me. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice, isn't it? Oh my yeah. god. Helpers? Well, oh, so cool. nice. And they're both like pros. They're both like great at everything. It was just mm-hmm. nice being having like great guys to rely on there. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Good to hear. Uh, I got a well. shout out, maybe a little preemptive, but uh Crystal for this weekend for shooting the three gun match, her first three gun match. Yay. Nice. Oh. Congrats. And then, uh, you know, shout out to the elk that boosted my confidence. But next time, why don't you stay the course and let me shoot you? <laughs> Stand <laughs> still. Just stay there. I'm coming in to the you. open so I can see you. Right. <laughs> and go broadside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much yeah. Fast. Come on. <laughs> You'll get it next time. You really will. Yeah. You'll get your elk. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> That's good. And my shout out is to Kyle for whose story taught us that if you bore sight for a man, he shoots on target for a day. And if you teach him to <laughs> bore sight, he shoots on target for a lifetime. So I'll end with that. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the Moisms. Got it. Yeah. Wisdom, eh? <laughs> yeah. Wisdom. Uh, check us out on Gunners of Canada. Like us on Facebook. 
give us a review on Facebook. We'd really appreciate it. Join the CCFR, which is super important. Uh, see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs> so if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.